Welcome to week six of the Atomic Habits Book Study. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday we go live on Keto on the Couch where we just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it. So welcome to week six the Yay! final week of Rachel's book study on Atomic Habits. I am so stinking excited. Are you excited? I'm excited. This has been a really really fun thing to do and I'm so thankful that you're here and that we get to complete a book together. <laughs> we doing it Joe. Well, you're doing it. We're totally, well, everybody's doing it together. And I yeah. love that. That's so fun. So the way this works is Rachel's going to take over the live stream. If you haven't been for any of the rest Taking of them, over. Uh, she's going to go through her notes and every once in a while, she's going to address the chat. Uh, we do currently have uh, the chat enabled for everybody. Our Thursday night live streams and our Monday live streams, we're switching it over. Do you have to be a subscriber? Which is really not a big deal. It's literally you have to be a subscriber for one minute. It's, All you have to do is hit the subscribe button and then you can chat. It is really a protective layer. It's not like we're trying to control stuff. It's that it kind of there works. There have been lots of bots putting porn stuff yes, in chats. Yes, putting naughty things in, in chats. And so this way it almost acts like one of those, what is it, a CAPTCHA? Those, yeah, those pain in the neck CAPTCHA things. Where that, you're like, making sure. How many fire hydrants are in this picture? Exactly. It's not like I really need training in identifying a fire hydrant but it just protects everybody right so so yeah if you have a question that you really want answered or comment go ahead and use the super chat function down below that's the little dollar sign that's in the window it does help support the channel it also highlights our screen so that we can see your chat and also again if you're getting something out of this content consider using the thanks button down below where you can give a little uh, thanks to us I'm gonna let you take over Yay. here. Hopefully just... everything works. Oh, I hope because so. Because we redid the entire system and yes. I think I've got it going. Yes, so uh, let me actually just kind of start in the chat and see who all is in here. Deb Riley, let me make sure I'm clicking on it correctly. Do you wanna see it? There it goes. Okay. Hello, hello Deb Riley. Scott is here. Says got Atomic Habits late in the game, so I've never been able to catch up. I love the book discussion though and hope to be able to finish the book on vacation next week. I love the fact that we've done this in like a video format. So whether you're live with us right now and you're finishing up with this at the same time, or you know you wanna go back and, and reference some of the other sections that we have um, covered over the last six sessions, um, I'm excited about it. It can still be useful to people even moving forward. And I, I hope that maybe this can be an encouragement to even friends or loved ones that, that you have that are, are looking to have a really fun read over the summer. And maybe this will provide some discussion points for them. Because I really think that whether you're keto or you're trying to establish fitness habits, um, there's also some like parenting and business breakout uh, studies that are companions to this book. So check out the uh, Atomic Habits like main James Clear page because he has some uh, downloads that you can use for free. Miriam is here. Hello, beautiful Miriam. I'm, I'm seeing your beautiful picture with Chris right, right now, but I'm picturing you with that cute, adorable backwards cap that you had in the Keto Child live stream last night. I loved it so much. Uh, Jen is here, says, this has been a highlight of my week for the past month. Thank you so much for doing this. Jen, thank you so much for being here. I have just felt so encouraged since day one. I believe it was Jen, What you were the first comment that I read. And when we started this, I was just so petrified to, to be by myself in a live stream. And I'm so thankful that I have never been by myself. I had my friends like Jen here to support me. And I really, really appreciate that. Jock is here, says, hello, adore the ability to catch up on replay and today live. Great experience and such a fantastic 
book. Yes, I have really enjoyed, I, I, I mean, it feels bad that like, I, I feel like I've been blessed by this more than anybody here because it's just been such a great, great opportunity to, to read this book and, and kind of feel accomplished. And I think that this is going to be a very empowering live stream because when it finishes today, we will have completed a book together. And for some people, this is an opportunity to reclassify yourself. Maybe for some time you've identified as a person who is incapable of following through with things. Maybe you've said to yourself, I don't finish stuff, or I'm never that person that's crossing the finish line of a goal. Well, that ends today, guys. I'm so excited about that. And I feel very blessed to be here when that happens. I enjoy being alongside you to celebrate the fact that you can see a task or a challenge all the way to the end. You are a faithful person. You are a person of integrity. Maybe you've said to yourself, I'm determined to get something out of this experience. And I'm so proud of you for investing this time and effort together with me. So today we are truly going to wrap up Atomic Habits with this first uh, section or the last section rather that says advanced tactics how to go from being merely good to truly great and I love this thought so much I think we should really write it on a post-it note and stick it on the bathroom mirror for too long I didn't see myself as good I didn't see anything in the mirror as good and when I looked in the mirror all I saw really were my failures but there's good stuff here you know I, there's good stuff there's good stuff when you look in the mirror and I'm not striving for good, I am good, and I'm a good investment of my time and my talent right now, right where I'm at. And that's why I believe that there is an opportunity to take this good and continue honing my skills and abilities to do great things. And I believe that about you too, I truly do. And um, you're good right now, that's what I think. And I believe that you are capable of doing truly great things for yourself and for your family. And um, James says, the secret to maximizing your odds of success, and that's really what we all want, is to choose the right field of competition. And um, our chapter begins with two athletes who happen to share the same length inseam in their pants. I thought that was really interesting. They have general athleticism and an inseam in common, but that is about it. One is a champion on land and the other is a champion in water. They're built very differently. On one hand, you've got a swimmer that uh, has relatively short legs for his height and a very long torso. That's perfect for swimming. And on the other hand, you've got a runner with incredibly long legs and a short upper body, he's built for distance running. Could these two switch sports and still be as successful in life as they are right now? No, I don't think so. Their individual body types give them advantage for the sport that they're currently in, but if you take those same body types and stick them in the wrong sport, they'll actually be at a disadvantage. So the secret to maximizing your odds of success is to choose the right field of competition. Now, a gold medalist swimmer could spend years hating themselves for not being a champion long distance runner, but I don't think they do that. So why do we do that? That's my, my question. Let's stop kicking ourselves for what we're not great at. Each of us have something that we are good at. And if you haven't discovered what you're good at doing yet, that's where you want to invest your time and your energy. Find something that you're good at because that is prime real estate for developing greatness. And I think a lot of us spend time wishing we were Bo Jackson. If you were an 80s kid like me, you were probably also a fan like me of Bo Jackson. Let me know down down in the chat, does anybody remember Bo Jackson? He is the only professional athlete in history to be named an all-star in both baseball and football. He was just an incredible athlete. And Nike had a campaign called Bonos, if you remember, back in 1989 and 1990. They were trying to market their cross-training sneakers, so they leveraged the fact that Bo was amazingly good at two big things by suggesting he was probably good at everything. 
thing. They were like, Bono's baseball and Bono's football. Now that was a fact, but then they suggested that he was at the same level in every sport. They'd say Bono's basketball and Bono's tennis, and they'd have him keeping up with superstars in those fields like Michael Jordan and John McEnroe. And as a kid, I seriously thought that what I was seeing was true and that there were some people, not me, um, but there were some people who were good at everything. They just needed to try something um, and they were capable of mastering it just in an instant. But the best part of this commercial, if you remember, was when Bo tries to play the guitar at the end of the commercial and he fails miserably at it. So then blues legend Bo Diddley says, Bo, you don't know Diddley. And that's the takeaway I need to focus on. There are things that we're going to be naturally good at doing and there are going to be things that we don't know diddly about, right? So to speak. So we need to play to our strengths and there's nothing wrong with that to play to our strengths. That's not like you're cheating in the game of life. It's completely fine to, to do that. So let me see what you guys are saying in the chat. I'm gonna click on here. I'm getting some like weird feedback, Joe. I don't know if, if you can hear it or there's something going on in the other room. Um, sounds like a garage thing. Um, Paul says the stuff around personality types, working with your type, not against it. And the role of oxycotton, um, or oxytocin rather was so interesting. I felt like that too. Um, Miriam says, here is James Clear's last week's newsletter link if anybody wants it. Thanks so much for that. Cause I think that that is like just super helpful to keep in touch with, you know, he's constantly putting out other, you know, helpful things that we can utilize. Uh, Penny says, my dad is taller than me when standing, when we sit, I'm nearly even with him. That, isn't that amazing? So perspective plays a huge role, right? Because if, if we were watching um, Penny, because of the way their bodies are built differently, they look like they're the same, exactly the same, but they're very different when they stand up. That's so cool. Um, Miriam said, the feedback is too quiet for us here. Thank you so much. Bless your heart, Miriam. I appreciate that. She she knows that it can, it can be a little bit stressful and alive and, and you're never sure, like, how loud is it? Like, it feels loud to me, but is it actually loud? All right, so let's go up and go move right into this. Okay, so if you pick the right habit, progress is easy. And if you pick the wrong habit, life is a struggle. So usually when we're filling out a family history at the doctor's office, it's a doom and gloom task, right? You're trying to uncover the possible worst case scenarios of your biology and your family's medical history. And you get this, you're trying to get the scariest picture of how your life is going to end. But today we have the opportunity to celebrate our genes, right? That's something we rarely do, but we're going to celebrate our genes. And I don't mean your Jordan genes, right? Okay, so genes cannot be easily changed, which means they provide a powerful advantage in favorable circumstances and a serious disadvantage in unfavorable circumstances. So praise God, we are all differently abled. I'm glad about that. Sadly, we usually only meditate on that fact when we're thinking about why we can't do something and someone else can do something. We don't take as much time to reflect on how our unique abilities should be celebrated and they truly should be celebrated. Now, I don't come from a long line of athletes and there aren't a bunch of seamstresses in my family line. None of my family members have been amazing decorators or had their homes featured in House Beautiful. So if I limit my focus on success to those areas, then my gene pool looks pretty jacked up, right? So we're all a bunch of failures as far as that perspective is concerned. On the other hand, I come from a long line of educators and researchers. Maybe I don't have the genes to make um, myself a success as a fashion designer, but I do have the genes to write you a report on fashion design. Does that make sense? I absolutely have the questioning mind and the boldness um, running through my genes to go walk up to a leading fashion designer and interview them. So what about you? Tell me 
in the chat what success is teeming in your gene pool. Tell me something good. Tell me something good. I don't want to hear about your family's weaknesses. Those are the easiest thing in the world for us to focus on. We want to focus instead on the positive. Maybe your family members are natural gardeners or they're really musically inclined. Maybe you come from a long line of encouragers or master craftsmen. It's important for us to track down our strengths because our genes don't determine our destiny. They determine our areas of opportunity. And that is something I find really exciting and a lot more helpful to focus on. So habits are easier when they align with your natural abilities. So choose the habits that best suit you. And as James suggests, play a game that favors your strengths. If you can't find a game that favors you, create one. And I loved how James actually created a major for himself in college because nothing seemed to fit him just right. So he made something new um, to favor his strengths. So while you guys are populating the chat, with some of the things to celebrate about your gene pool, let's talk about the five spectrums of behavior, better known as the big five personality traits. So first there is openness to experience with curious and inventive on one end and cautious and consistent on the other. And I can tell you right now that Joe comes from a long line of curious and inventive people. And they weren't just inventive because they had to be. It wasn't just because um, his parents and grandparents were brought up very poor. They were natural tinkerers. Joe tinkers. He likes to solve problems. He likes to make things. And his dad and his grandparents like to do those things as well. The second trait is conscientiousness. That spans from everything from organized and efficient to easygoing and and spontaneous and I love that there's this huge range because there are benefits to to all of those um, along the spectrum all along the spectrum there you can find pros not just cons but pros as well the third trait is extroversion so do you come from a long line of extroverts or introverts my dad was an introvert but he was the exception in his family line he wasn't the rule and even he could plug into his extrovert bloodline when he needed to muster it up for various jobs throughout his career we would notice that that he was able to plug into that gene pool when he needed to. It wasn't something that he loved, but it was nice to know that it was there. And if that hadn't been a part of his genes, he wouldn't have been able to plug into it so easily. So uh, next up is agreeableness. This can range from friendly and compassionate to challenging and detached. And right off the bat, we may wrongly see this as a trait with a pass-fail aspect to it. We may think, hey, the only way to be successful in life is to have a person personality where you've never met a stranger, right? Anybody who is guarded or doesn't just want to invite everybody to come move in with them is negative. We can wrongly think that. But is that the level of agreeableness that you want if you are hiring an air marshal for an airplane or maybe you're hiring a military general? You know, do you want to the scout for your favorite sporting team to be like, yay, everybody's a winner. We don't care about your skill level. Welcome aboard. No, of course not. You want somebody who can spot the best and leave the rest. And finally, there is neuroticism, and it ranges from anxious and sensitive to confident, calm, and stable. And I used to hate how sensitive I was. Just like my grandfather, I can cry at a refrigerator commercial. Like that is a special skill for me. But boy, has my sensitivity helped me in working with children and also identifying potential um, threats. I've actually worked closely with the security team um, of different organizations because I, I, I'm a worrier. I'm a natural worrier, but that helps me to spot vulnerabilities. And, and that's not always a negative thing. I can help you to, to be successful. So um, before we check in with the chat again, uh, genes do not eliminate the need for hard work. They clarify it. 
and they tell us what to work hard on. We don't have to apologize for our differences. Isn't that something to celebrate? We don't have to apologize because we are different. We don't have to feel guilty about it, but we do have to work with our differences. We need to work with our personality traits. And when you're trying to develop habits, it's a good idea to ask yourself four questions. What feels like fun to me where it might feel like work to others? What makes me lose track of time? Where do I get greater returns than the average person? What comes naturally to me? Those are four great questions that we can ask of ourselves. So let me go ahead and pause right there. I'm gonna put my little placeholder there and we'll go and check in with the chat. I wanna go back a, a wazy ways and see what you guys are saying. Da, 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 da. Let me see. Okay, Jen says, uh, this kind of reminds me of Strengths Finder. It's a great book and test to identify your top five traits and strengths. Yes, I totally hope that this is not your your last stop as far as these types of books and this genre of books are concerned. I hope that this is just like wet your whistle for um, investigating more about yourself and learning to work with yourself instead of work against yourself. Um, Geneva says, if you homeschool your children, you get to start them in this journey sooner. That is absolutely right. It is such a privilege. I know sometimes it's really, you know, it's challenging to help kids with school projects. And oh my goodness, you feel like you say a million times, hey, I've already finished school, okay? So me trying to motivate you to do projects and to do homework, maybe you're helping, you know, to be your an additional teacher, for your child, or maybe you are the sole teacher for your child, and that can be very challenging, but if you can come at it from the perspective like Geneva is, is having, and say like, wow, I get to help walk them through these early stages as they develop you know, into the people that they're going to be. And I get to encourage them as they discover what are their strengths, right? Like that is just such a powerful thing. Um, Debbie says, there's a mixture of all of those things in my family. That That is fantastic, right? Like, and we can pull from that. It's funny, a lot of times we think, well, we're gonna really be a lot like our mom or we're gonna be a lot like our dad and that's it. But go ahead and check more of those people in your family circle. Maybe you're more like a cousin. Maybe you see your personality type in a great grandparent. You know, if you study family history and this is a great opportunity to, to have a reason to call maybe a family member that you haven't been in touch with it for a while and just kind of, um, Talk about what is that oral tradition in your in your family? Share some family stories and discover about yourself. You know, what are some of the, the great people in your family that you probably uh, resemble, right? That's so fun to, to do that. I, I'm definitely a lot like an uncle of mine. I'm like some great aunts of mine. And it's just really a fun thing um, to celebrate and to discover things about yourself. Okay, so moving on, we see that the Goldilocks rule states that humans experience peak motivation when working on tasks that are right on the edge of their current abilities. How amazing was the story of comedian Steve Martin and how he got his start? He spent 10 years learning, four years refining, and four years as a wild success. And I'm sure that there were people who first became aware of Steve Martin um, during his wildly popular four years of success when he was just starting with Saturday Night Live and he was going on some major road tours. And they probably just thought that he was some sort of just like wonderkin, right? Like just an amazing overnight success. But he was an overnight success 18 years in the making. He stuck with his habits like we want to do. So how do we do that? We work on tasks of just manageable difficulty. That's what we're looking for, just manageable difficulty. So if you're playing tennis against a toddler, after a while, you're probably going to get bored. The win is too easy. As much as that, like, that pains me, like a win could be too easy, yes, that win will definitely be 
too easy. And if you play against tennis great Serena Williams, you're gonna lose motivation very quickly because the match is going to be too difficult. But if you play tennis against someone who is your current equal, your equal right now, you'll have a chance of winning, but only if you really try. And, and that's that's really what we're talking about when it, when it says just manageable difficulty level. The Goldilocks rule states that humans are gonna experience that peak motivation when they're working on tasks right at the edge of their current abilities. Not too easy, not too hard, but like, you know, Goldilocks likes just right. So when you're starting a new habit, it's important to keep the behavior as easy as possible so you can stick with it even when conditions aren't perfect. And that's what our June challenge is in this month. That's why I'm putting on my socks and sneakers first thing every morning. Like I'm putting them on every morning. I'm taking a picture of it. I'm posting it on Instagram. I'm posting it on Facebook. And if you don't understand what our monthly challenge is, you're probably like, okay, congratulations, you put your shoes on. Um, but it's because rain or shine, regardless of my attitude or um, my schedule for the day, I can be successful at putting on those socks and sneakers. I get a check mark first thing in the morning and you know, PS, as we've talked about in this Atomics Habits book study, if I get my socks and my sneakers on, I am more likely to get my fitness in. It's just a, a really good first start for me and it has worked. So um, I'm team bear so far as we're in like day 15 of this month, every single day I, I've been able to be consistent. And that really is encouraging because you have a win day after day after day, instead of if we've measured success some other way and you have like, oh, a day of win, oh, a day of failure, you know, it's very hard to, to stay positive about that. So, but I need to advance in small ways. I can't just stick with putting my shoes and you know, socks on every morning. I need to be challenging myself to move forward in order to keep myself engaged. It's important not to get bored. And, and that's our, our next thought, which is the greatest threat to success is not failure, it's boredom. And as habits become quite routine, they become less interesting and less satisfying and we get bored. So share in the chat, what is the next small step that you are planning to use to keep yourself engaged in the good habit that you're currently working on? Bored, the word bored was always the B word in our household. And when the boys were growing up, they knew not to say that word to me because if they said that they were bored, I'd offer them some household chores to do. But if I'm honest, I don't have a bottomless reserve of passion when it comes to goals. And if I have a long string of good days, I can be my own worst enemy and rationalize taking a day or two off because I'm in a good place. Isn't that, man, isn't that sad? As I am reading this book, I realized that taking days off is not an actual celebration of me being in a good place. It's a road trip to the novelty store. All right, so just remember that. It's a road trip to the novelty store. This is not the celebration of good behavior. If I need to stop what I'm doing, if I'm having success after success, and then I need to have a day off from success. It's not because I'm bored of success. It's because I want to do something different. We desire novelty, basically something different to do to such an extent that those who are doing well wish for a change as much as those who are doing badly. And I always thought that, wow, if I was consistently winning, I'd never get bored. I'd never be dissatisfied, but that's not true as we see. And that's why junk food is so appealing. They even call it novelty food, don't they? It's going to have a variety of taste. It's going to have a variety of textures. And there's even a variable reward to junk food. So just open up the package and you'll see there is an element that I believe would appeal to a gambler, right? Is it going to be good? Is it going to be terrible? You've got sort of a personal mini review video going on inside of your mouth. Am I going to get away with eating this? It's really, you can see it's, it would appeal to a, a gambling thought, right? It gives you 
you just enough winning to experience satisfaction and just enough wanting to experience desire. So we need to develop habits with an awareness that boredom can sneak in. And I got to give a shout out to my mom. I know I've talked a, a lot about her in this in while we've been doing this book study, but I'm just so proud because she's really dove into this challenge. And I love what my mom has done with her exercise habits. So she started out with a very doable entry level plan. She wants to move 30 minutes each day. Now she is continuing to do her sit down to eat thing. She's been successful more than 15 days in. She has broken that habit of eating while standing up. And I really am definitely applauding that effort. But she also has the desire to move 30 minutes a day. So when she started out, she made it easy to get that exercise in. She walked out her front door, excuse me, and around the neighborhood for 30 minutes. At first, she was back in her house after 30 minutes and one second, pretty much. She set a timer on her phone for 30 minutes, and when she heard the timer, she was done. She walked right back into that house. Then she started to walk a little further as she did it more often, and when the timer went off, she just started heading back to her house. She ventured out a little bit more. So she got out more than 30 minutes of exercise and that worked for a while, but she's been reading this Atomic Habits book and she said to me that she is aware of the fact that boredom could undermine what she's doing. So she went back to the original plan. She said 30 minutes of exercise. She didn't say 30 minutes at the gym. She didn't say 30 minutes of walking. Those 30 minutes could be spent moving any way that she wants. So she began changing it up. And last night she actually drove to the beach and walked 30 minutes there. Last week she spent 30 minutes, you know, one of her days in the pool. On Saturday, we, w we moved way more than 30 minutes at a local botanical garden. And tomorrow she's going with me to spend some time uh, with our daughter and our grand puppy at a park and we're gonna be moving. So what used to be a dreaded goal of having to exercise each day now sounds a lot more like, hey, let's go spend 30 minutes living our life or enjoying ourselves in some way. So it's, I think it's because she has worked in opportunities to boredom bust, she's she's really enjoying the challenge instead of dreading it. Like she kind of first did it at, at, um, at the beginning of this. Oh, so Miriam says uh, to, to my mom, good job, sweet lady. I am so proud of you. Um, Oh, Geneva is bringing in a good perspective, especially probably when, it, when this talks about junk food, is it going to taste as good as it did when I was a child? Yes, especially if maybe you go on a road trip, summertime can really be challenging for um, like some junk foods that maybe you have like worked out of your life. Maybe this will be the first time that you're gonna be driving up I-95 from Florida to New York, like, you know, we we had done in the past. And, you know, you don't have to deal with stuckies all the time, but maybe for the first time in a long time, you're gonna be doing a road trip. You're gonna be traveling. You're gonna be going outside of, of your home to go on vacation places. And you're gonna come in contact with some junk food that maybe you remember from your childhood and part of you wanting to taste that is going to be a, a gamble of, will this bring up some um, childhood memories? And, and what I would encourage you to do is don't just taste the flavors of your childhood, but go to the places of your childhood. You know, we, we did family uh, reunions when I was growing up at fish camps all over uh, the state of Florida. And you know we would rent little cabins and we would go boating and we would go swimming and we would go fishing. And I think a better test of um, my childhood would be, do I still enjoy those moments of peace with family members that we were able to have, you know, at a fish camp, at w fishing and relaxing and watching the sunrise come up and and watching the you know the the sundown um, sunset. I'm looking for that word and it's not coming, but that <laughs> but that's it. So there's other ways that we can remember our childhood that could not undermine our goals, right? So Scott says, my wife and I have been working on recipes too. We're growing our Google Docs folder of keto recipes. That's a great challenge to have for yourself, especially if one of the habits that you're working on currently is staying keto. That is a really great and giant um, habit 
to start establishing in your house. If you're a family that's trying to move the whole family over to a lower carb protocol, that's a big deal. That's a, that's a big thing to do. And so you need to work in things like this, like get excited, like buy yourself um, something to store recipes, something to um, reflect on, take pictures and make photo albums of you guys cooking together, cooking things that are fueling your health. And at the same time as you're taking pictures um, of your culinary successes in keto, you're also, wink, wink, taking pictures of yourself as you lose weight, right? What a better measure of success on keto to be like, hey, we're shrinking as a family, making these uh, recipes together, having some good family time. It's just, that that's just such a better way to measure success and to celebrate as a family. Blue Dove says, I'm trying to prep some different meals and recipes to keep the boredom away. Yes, absolutely. There's such a variety. One of the things that Joe and I have really enjoyed and we're you know getting back to now that we're gonna have some more time to uh, camp. We love doing keto camping fear factor. Make it fun for yourself. Maybe there's some proteins that you're like, that's not my favorite. You know, give it a shot, give it a try. Even I am willing to try liver, to try venison. Even Joe is willing to try some different seafoods and give it a shot. And maybe you can just do it as a game. Use it as a game to get started. Um, Michelle, hey, beautiful, says childhood food tastes different now because it was the experience I cherished not the food. You are so, so right. That That's so good and so wise to have that perspective. And I'm so thankful for this opportunity for us all to be here together and say that, to say it inside of the group, because it's going to resonate not just with me and not just with you, but so, so many other people. We just kind of need to, to hear that. All right. So moving on, let me see if I can get back to my, there it is. So as we can see, anyone can work hard when they feel motivated. It's the ability to keep going when work isn't exciting that makes the difference. And my mom had to prepare for the newness to wear off, right? We've got to wash those workout clothes at some point. You know, it's so exciting when you're starting to work out and you get a cute new outfit and you get some tennis shoes that are new and fresh but they get dirty, right? And the 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 uh, the shine on your workout outfit kind of loses its its high gloss on it once we're using it. So we need to stay enthusiastic about it. And every day won't be a day when my mom is gonna be able to get her movement in with somebody she loves. Sometimes she's gonna have to, you know, get those steps in by herself, but she's determined to get it in and she's going to put the creative effort into this habit to keep it interesting. Don't tell me that you're bored with keto. Tell me how you're going to use the creative ability that you have and even like your, your precious fingers. If you've got fingers, you're gonna Google and you're gonna stretch your ability and you're gonna do the hard work that it's gonna take to keep keto interesting, right? That That's what's important. We see that professionals stick to the schedule, amateurs let life get in the way. And if you have participated in this book study, two things have happened. Number one, we got closer as a community and I'm so thankful for that. I'm just so, so thankful for this opportunity to, to come alongside with you during this experience. And then number two, you stop being an amateur. Our eyes have been opened a little to how our mind works. We understand now how products have been marketed to us so easily and why certain bad habits have had a hold on us for so long. And if you're a fan of the matrix, this immediately came to mind for me. You can say we stopped taking the blue pill to remain in contented ignorance. We've swallowed the red pill now once we've read this book and have learned some life-changing truth. But now let's not go back to being pitiful. Moving forward, let's be powerful because you can't be both pitiful and powerful. You got to pick one. And I really, really hope that that we choose powerful, right? Let's, let's go ahead and check in with the chat today. Let me see if uh, you have... Any more like good encouraging statements that people can use to um, to keep themselves powerful moving forward. So Maria says it's supposed to hit triple digits here by this afternoon. I am so sorry that it is hot. I definitely think that the heat has caused my mom to be super creative. Sometimes she's had to go get her steps in by going to an air conditioned mall uh, because it's too hot to do it outside. Sometimes she has to set her alarm clock and do uh, her walks like very, very early in the morning to beat the heat. 
Definitely, I think that she was motivated uh, to go into the pool, to like move her movement into the pool uh, to keep cool, which is really awesome. Um, mommy, oh, mommy's saying, okay, yeah, at least we got a nice breeze, so that helps. Yes, it's it, you definitely have to kind of cling to the bright side because there's definitely reasons not to get movement in, reasons not, there's obstacles all along the way. So we're, we're trying to tighten up our systems to make sure that we stay, you know, on target. Okay, so let's see. The upside of habits is that we can do things without thinking. The downside is that we stop paying attention to little errors. So here we are, we're headed into the very last section of this book. Thank you for staying with me. So when you can do it good enough on autopilot, you stop thinking about how you can do it better. And in some areas of life, that's fine. When I was learning to tie my shoes, I started out terrible at it. I was awful. I actually learned how to tie my shoes using a record player. That's how old I am. There was a record that I could use on my little toy record player um, and it had a book that went with it and it had a little special tie your shoes song and that's how I began learning to tie my shoes but when I started I was terrible at it and then day after day there was progress the bow that I made looked tighter and cleaner but at some point good enough was truly good enough I'm not trying to get better at tying my shoes anymore but there is a value to mastering other skills there are some things that you want want to continue getting better at. And we see that this is the formula for that. Habits plus deliberate practice equals mastery. And mastery is the process of narrowing your focus to a tiny element of success, repeating it until you have internalized the skill and then using this habit as the new foundation to advance to the next frontier of your development. Cause we never stop growing, right? We never stop trying to get better. Old tasks become easier the second time around, but it doesn't get easier overall, or at least it shouldn't, because now you're gonna be pouring your energy into the next challenge. And it's right here, right when things are starting to feel automatic and you are becoming comfortable in what you're doing that you want to add weight to your strength training. This is the time when you want to maybe optimize your keto a little bit more. And too often, people haven't mastered basic keto yet. They're not even consistently eating keto food for six months or a year, and they want to take it up a notch and go full-blown carnivore. We're, we're seeing that more and more that that's the case. So, or maybe they haven't consistently eaten just three meals a day without snacking, and they want to jump right into OMAD. And when they experience failure, they don't understand why. They think there's something wrong with them. Well, if you had a child who hadn't mastered riding their bike without training wheels, would you be mad at them because they couldn't do circus tricks like standing on top of their handlebars? Of course not. They have to get the basics down first and then layer in new skills when they're authentically ready. How will they know when they're ready? Well, is it going to be like an epiphany that they're ready? No. You know that if you've mastered something, um, there's a test in place to, to determine if you've mastered it. If you're learning to play the piano, you start out with a b basic piece of sheet music, you know that you're ready to step up to the next level when you can play that piece of sheet music without making any mistakes, right? There's no emotion involved. It's not like you're a good person or a bad person because you can play that sheet music. It's just you have continued practicing it until you do it, right? And you've got a clear system in place for testing proficiency. And when you master a piece of sheet music, then you move on to a harder song. And there is a reasonable step um, a step up when you're adding difficulty, right? So there's no music teacher that's going to have a child learn Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and then when they master that, go ahead and start, you know, um, doing Mozart, right? That's not going to happen. We have to do this uh, when we can actually do this. So hopefully this, this will help somebody who's maybe been struggling, um, thinking that I, I need to go harder, faster. No, you really want to master this skill. So if you have, I would say, 
I would not go to the next level of keto unless you have had six solid months of no problems. Like you have eaten it, you know, you. I wouldn't go to OMAD necessarily unless you're just like trying it out, unless you know I can eat uh, three times a day, no more than three times a day. I'm not snacking anymore. That's when you try to optimize what you're doing. You don't try to like, you know, bite off more than you can chew basically. So um, we see reflection and review is a process that allows you to remain conscious of your performance over time. And some of us need to start building on the habit of liking ourselves because we are going to have to study ourselves a lot in order to continue making forward momentum in our lives. I can't be a good baseball coach if I don't wanna build any kind of rapport with the players on the team. I can't keep saying, Rachel, just do this because I said so. I really need to get to know what brings me joy and what piques my curiosity. I need to know my love language. And I also need to know what a doable next step looks like for me. And when Joe coached Little League, all the kids were playing at different skill levels. He knew precisely when to add a new layer of difficulty to their training. He didn't know what they needed by osmosis. He had spent hours reviewing their plays. He spent time trying to uncover what motivated them personally. Now, some of the kids needed to keep their eyes on the superstars of the sport in order to stay engaged. Um, that helped keep their head in the game. So knowing that, Joe would buy packs of baseball cards for the kids, for those kids that, that responded to it. Or he'd buy individual cards of a kid's favorite player. That's how we met, actually. Um, he was trying to buy some baseball cards for some uh, kids on his team, and my family owned a baseball card store. What he didn't know, and what I'm so thankful for, is my family family also owned a comic book store and he accidentally, what a happy accident, came into the comic book store where I worked instead of the baseball card store that um, he had intended to. So I'm really thankful that uh, Joe invested the time in being a good coach. And I'm sh sure that it wasn't always easy and it won't always be easy to like yourself, especially if you're like me and if you've spent a considerable amount of your life so far hating yourself. I have hated myself for a lot longer than I've liked myself. Um, but if you want to stop striking out when it comes to good habits, you 100%, 100% have to be the head coach of your team. Now, Joe and I love you and we want you to succeed. I know that Dr. Barry and other people in the space love you and they want you to succeed. But at best, we are only ever going to be able to be assistant coaches in your keto journey. You are the head coach and you are going to have to gather the data on yourself. You're gonna to need to reflect on it. You're gonna to need to review the plays and you're gonna to have to add a new lane of opportunity when the flow of results in your systems has bottlenecked. And um, the point is, the tighter we cling to an identity, the harder it becomes to grow beyond it. And water moves or it becomes stagnant. And I want our lives uh, to be refreshing, don't you? That's gonna require a continuous process of moving forward. And before we end this book study with the chat, I love James's final thoughts because now we really do have a set of tools and strategies that we can use to build better systems and shape better habits. And he says, sometimes a habit will be hard to remember. And when that happens, we'll have to make it obvious. Other times we won't feel like starting and we'll need to make it attractive. In many cases, we may find that a habit is too difficult and we'll need to make it easy. And sometimes we won't feel like sticking with it and we'll need to make it satisfying. But through this book, I think that we've learned that it's all doable. All of those things, all of those different steps are doable. And that makes me very hopeful for, for my future and it makes me very hopeful for your future. So I'm really, really tickled um, to have completed this book together. We're gonna, I, I'm gonna go to the chat now and we're gonna spend the last couple of minutes talking in the chat. So if you have something that, that you want to share, um, please share that. Please share some habits that you're currently working on and, and some of the, maybe even the modifications that you've had to make to, to stay successful. Um, 
And uh, I just want to say bef before I forget and, and make sure that I, I make this clear, thank you so much for sharing your Wednesday with me. I've really enjoyed this time that we have spent together. Um, I know that it was an investment for you, for the people that bought the book, that was an investment. And I really appreciate you coming alongside and doing this book study with me. I, I'm really hoping that it, like since it's gonna be up on YouTube forever, <laughs> that it will be a blessing to, for people in years to come. That That's really my, my great hope. And so I really encourage you to, to leave comments on for future people to see. Maybe even go back to that first starting one and, and share some wins that you've had in some habits that, that you've been working on because people need to see that. People need to see, you know, hey, there was a time when I didn't believe that I could make any forward momentum and, and now I do. And this is a tip that I have and I really feel like it's gonna be a blessing to, to everybody. And oh, there's mom. Me. I love it. Um, congrats to all of us. And um, yes, Jen says you're going to have to control the process. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it is hard work, but is there anything more like a better investment than your life? I mean, even if you say, well, the thing that's the most precious to me is my family. Well, then invest in your life so that you can be around for them longer. Invest in your life so that you can enjoy the time that you're with them, that you could be your healthiest self. I think that that is the true test. I, I, I love my children and I want to be my best self for them so that I can be the mother that they need me to be. Um, Chris says, habit work for me is not to try to focus on a dozen things at once, give my whole self to one or two things at a time or a person. That is so powerful, Chris. I, I think that that is the number one key to success. I think a lot of it goes back to, you know, if, if you think, man, I need to overhaul my life. You know, if we, we talk about ourselves in such broad strokes, like there's nothing I like about myself or everything is wrong or I don't think I'll ever experience any success. That's just such a, a broad paint stroke and, and we need to do this hard work with a with, with a much um, finer tool. I think a lot about, cause I've got Jurassic Park on the mind cause you know, the new Jurassic Park movie is out. And I was thinking that, you know, when they start out trying to uncover the dinosaur and bones, you know, they're starting out with like, they're got big diggers and they're moving sand out of the way. And you know, it's a huge, big things. But as you get tr you know closer to that dinosaur, those tools get really, really tiny. Why? Because they don't want to damage anything. They want to preserve what they've got there. And I think that as we get closer to yourself, when we're, we're authentically trying to establish some good habits in our life, we need to do it with a very fine tooth, you know, paintbrush. We, we really need to um, find something very small. We want to make big, you know, changes, but that begins with small strokes and, you know, that they're able to uncover giant, you know, dinosaurs. I, I, I love, there's a, I, I think it's in the Natural History Museum in Washington, D.C. is the big uh, blue whale. And I love that, that it's like, gosh, that, you know, how did they get that up there in the ceiling? One tiny little bone at a time. And it, and it really took a lot of patience. And I think that that's what we have to bring um, into our, our journey. Sarah, beautiful Sarah says, making myself accountable has helped me during the days I would have given up. And, and I got to tell you, um, just having accountability partners, having this community has really made it um, so much easier for me to stay on track. And I will say, I'm going to cry, Sarah, but precious Sarah, because I, I've been doing uh, putting my sneakers on and taking a picture of it every single day. She sent me a picture um, of her with her sneakers on to be like, you're not by yourself. And so on those days when I'm getting my exercise in and maybe I'm alone in this and I start to have those kind of negative feelings of like, I'm the only one trying to work on myself or, you know, I'm having a much harder time than everybody else is having, you know, though that, that snapshot of encouragement is so just so powerful. So I love the fact that even if we are not necessarily working on the same habit, maybe you know, I'm the only one working on my laundry mastery and, and it's been going really great. I can tell you honestly, throughout this entire time, I have not had a single basket of unfolded laundry on my couch. There is, my couch is able to be uh, sat upon. Um, you can come and enjoy my Davenport at this point because, you know, I've been working on it. But if you are saying you're working on your habits 
and and I'm working on and I say I'm working on my habits, then we're together and we're not alone in working on our habits, even if we're doing, you know, different things. Blue Dove says, uh, I still haven't learned how to make cleaning attractive though. Yeah, I gotta tell you, um, it, a, a beautiful girl gone keto, Erica, had something that really got me excited again. And it was this week, she says, does anybody, um, I don't know if anybody saw her Instagram reel where she was, um, she was just sweeping the floor, but she was doing it to really fun music. And I remembered when I was trying to mop the floor uh, this week, um, I was thinking, okay, there are some certain songs that like kind of get me up and moving and make me uh, happy no matter what I'm doing, right? So her sharing the fact that like she had remembered a song that she really liked helped me too. So so that kind of helps. It's not like, oh joy, I get to mop the floor. But um, I think to myself, if I mop the floor, I'll get to listen to my mixtape. And the kids can't tell me that this song is dorky or nerdy because, hey, I'm getting the floor mopped. And if you don't want to mop it, then you got to let mommy listen to you know her, her mixtape. So Paul says, still working on my habit to get to bed earlier, but now I feel more equipped and more aware of the process and system to success. Yeah, that is a really powerful thing. And we see that, you know, it's small steps. Uh, somebody was sharing uh, with me that they have been trying to be a reader for a very long time. And they actually used to get like a stomach ache when um, different magazines and different uh, like entertainment shows would kind of post what the summer reading list was like, or uh, a famous book club would post because they were like, gosh, I'm not a reader. And this just kind of like focuses on in on the fact that I'm still terrible at this and I don't have this together. Um, and just the simple task of when she makes her bed, putting a book on the pillow has changed everything. And the thought of just like, I'm just gonna read one page, that's all. I'm not trying to read a whole book in a day. I just need to read one page in order to become a reader. And by this time, she's, she's starting to, to read more than one page, but she's consistently getting it in. And um, and that's fine. Yeah, she's like, what is a Davenport? It's a couch. It's like another name for, for, for a couch, which is kind of funny, right? I, the only other person that I've ever heard say it is Chris Bear, because he's the best. Cindy says, this has been great, Rachel. Thank you for suggesting this book. Loved it. Thank you so much, Cindy. And, you know, please share with me. Send, send me, uh, at Rachel at Two Crazy Keto, send me your other um, ideas for, for books that you would, you know, like to read in the future, uh, because we really want to, you know, consider doing this again, because I think it's been just really fun to be a part of something. Scott says, huge thanks to you, Rachel and Joe. You have helped me to stay on my keto path. You guys are so awesome. Your book chat has been great, and I hope I can meet you someday. Yes, Scott, I want to meet you so badly. I'm so stinking proud of you, and you're making some just incredible you know, changes and, and having so much success and you're such an encouragement. And and my big ask for you would be, please continue to to share your pictures, share your family vacations, share what you're doing. Um, because every time you achieve a goal, you, you've just got that beautiful smile on your face and it's just so, so encouraging. And it, it really, it, it blesses us. So let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, Oh, there we go. Paul said, it's been so useful. I've even wrapped up my coffee and ha uh, coffee and have the ideal person that I'm planning to give it to, knowing it will really bless him too. Paul, I don't know if I could just love you more because you were just the sweetest word. We were saying before the, the live stream, Paul was the first person that we saw in tonight's chat. And, and I said, I just really love that man, don't you? And, and Joe's like, I do, I really love that man. So we really appreciate you, such an encourager. And um, not surprisingly, you are an encourager in every arena of your life. And I think that that is a blessing, um, especially if you read it and you didn't, you know, maybe it's good if you if you wrote a bunch of notes in, but if it's, you know, not too personal, you can even with notes or highlights, you can pass that on to somebody else. Or, you know, if you maybe took notes on the side as you were reading this book, certainly you could, um, you know, gift it to somebody else. And, and you know, not with a, a dedication of like, you need to fix some things, right? <laughs> That's like, I always have to, I love getting people cozy things like uh, pajamas and I enjoy getting 
people good smelling things like soaps and lotions. That's just something that I enjoy, but I always give it with like a qualifier. Like I ain't trying to say you stink, right? right? You know, if I give a kid a piggy bank, I'm not trying to say that like, I don't think that you're, you know, I think you're going to be reckless. Um, it really is a gift of love. And I, I think that this is, um, it's such a great gift because you can pass it on to somebody and say like, Hey, I read it first. And I, you know, that's really what our channel is all about is right. I think of, um, a lot of times, especially if you've spent any time in the Everglades, uh, we we've kind of gone through some areas when we'll go through hikes with the kids when they were growing up and, Joe would always go first and in, and it sometimes had a machete where he was kind of like moving, you know, the wildlife in the brush and just making sure that like it was safe to go forward. And there was some confidence that we all had that if he went through first and he's still moving forward that, you know, we can kind of follow behind and it's kind of a safe space. And I, I feel like that's, that's what we try to do all the time. It's like, we try to have the you know, the fails and recipes. And we try to do things like beef, butter, bacon, and egg. Cause we think that, you know, you need to have just a real ordinary person like us show that, that things are possible. And I think that if you gift, you know, atomic habits, you can be able to say to somebody like, Hey, um, I think that you're a great investment. I've, I've read this first and, and it really helped me to, to optimize some of the things that I'm trying to accomplish in my life. And I think that you're worth this investment for you as well. What do you think? I think you grew, I think you're completely right. So awesome. You did good. Thanks. We did it. We completed something. Don't you love that? Okay. So we're gonna get off. Uh, now don't forget tomorrow night, eight p eight thirty PM I say. Eastern time. We will do our regular Thursday night live stream and also on Saturday at six PM Eastern time. We're gonna do a special live stream for all of our channel supporters and our uh, for the members as well as the Patreon supporters. And uh, we've got some really cool things that we're planning and we want to discuss it with you. So if you can at all jump in there, it will be available on replay anyway, uh, but we are really, really excited about some of these things. We have a lot of work to get done between now and then so that we can launch it for you. Uh, but I'm super excited about it, are you? Me too. Yeah, so you, lots of ways that you're gonna be able to get in touch with us, private message boards, things like that. Things that Patreon and YouTube don't let us do. Right. <laughs> so that's one of the things we're really excited about. We're, we're gonna be able to be more engaged with the people who are really supporting, but don't worry if you're not a channel supporter or a Patreon member, we put out a time. We say five videos a week, but I think we're up to like at least seven when you include the live yeah, streams. Yeah, but I'm stuff. really hoping that maybe we can get a better schedule now. We're so working on we're it. We're working on a schedule so that like it's not I'm just still like about five days behind. You have on four everything. minutes and okay, now we're gonna premiere. Yeah. So, guys, thank you so much for joining us, and we will see everybody tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Bye, guys. We love you. Mm -hmm.